Hey everybody, my name is Seth. Welcome back to my Understanding the Houses series where I go through each house and um, each sign in that house. Today we're going to be covering the ninth house and the idea of higher education. Higher education is kind of a vague description being laid upon the ninth house. This vague idea kind of comes from the the older ideas all the way back to what university used to mean and, and maybe even Grecian times up to what education and higher education meant back when astrology was at its biggest point, having its most, having most of its literature written about it, having most of its popularity. And that was in the, the, the 50s, 60s, and 70s. And in and, and those decades, education was, or at least higher education, was the idea of much more than just going to university or just going to a college. Higher education was the idea of being able to experience life for the first time, getting out of your parents' getting out of your parents' house, getting out of the community that you grew up, being able to surround yourself with people around the same age as you, looking to, for experience, looking to learn something more about themselves rather than just what's in a book. Th that idea of higher education is the experience surrounding university rather than just what you're being taught in class. What you're being taught by a professor, what you're being taught in a classroom, no matter where it is, whether it's grade school, high school, or university, those lessons still surround the third house. It's just the information being um, dispensed. The ninth house and, and its idea of higher education has to do with the experience, the experiential knowledge and, and the potential to be gained from understanding more about yourself and the potential to be gained from challenging what you've been taught. That's what we're going to be focusing on today. The idea of challenging what you've been taught. What does that challenge look like and what does the potential of that challenge look like when looking at the sign sitting on your ninth house cusp? So let's just jump right in. I'm excited. So with Aries on your ninth house cusp, you've been taught this kind of neutral and tame approach to participation. Your ability to challenge that approach and your ability to, to aggressively self-promote is your form of potential. So with Taurus on the ninth house cusp, you're gonna to want to challenge your aversion to expressing personal thoughts. You may have been taught growing up the idea of keeping your emotions in check, keeping your opinion in check, and, and, and learning to not express what's going on inside your head so fluently, so um, violently, so aggressively, so emotionally. By challenging this idea, you're able to express your personal logic, and that's where your potential lies, and your ability to express your the logic behind what it is that you think, the logic behind your opinion. You don't, you may not have to immediately just tell people what's going on inside of you, but you can explain your logic and see how many doors that opens for you when you're able to do so. With Gemini on your ninth house cusp, this is about challenging your own belief systems, challenging your to learn something new and to move beyond what it is that has been handed down to you. Challenge the beliefs of your parents, challenge the beliefs of your family, challenge the beliefs of your community. Whatever it is that you're most comfortable believing, challenge that by learning new things about it. And your ability to adapt and stay adaptable when it comes to new knowledge is your potential. So with cancer on your ninth house cusp, what's most important to be challenged is your own self-imposed um, boundaries. Uh, the idea of saying yes is a sacrifice. And understanding the potential of that sacrifice is understanding your own potential in life. Start to understand the power of yes and what it means to say and what you're giving up when you say yes and what you're accepting when you say yes if you want to fully understand what it means to have cancer on your ninth house cusp. So with Leo in the ninth house cusp, it's important that you learn to challenge the idea of being a statistic. Challenge the idea of fitting into the world in ways in which you are supposed to, ways in which you assume people are fitting you into this society. Your ability to find unique ways of being useful, unique ways of fitting into society, is how you're going to be able to understand your potential. With Virgo on the third house cusp, you're going to want to challenge the vagueness surrounding intuitive knowledge and intuitive skill sets. You may have grown up 
getting an understanding of the importance of intuitive knowledge, the importance of being able to intuit what's going on around you, but to challenge that and to gain specialized methods and specialized skills is to take full advantage of your potential, to, to adopt a methodology and specialize in that methodology and focus on it and, and get rid of the vagueness, get rid of the, the need for intuitive information as much as possible. That's how you're going to be able to find a balance in life and find where your potential in life really lies by challenging what you've been given growing up, even though it may feel so with Libra in your ninth house, you're going to want to challenge the so-called advantage to initiative and instead start to embrace the idea of thoughtful acquisition. Thoughtful acquisition becomes your potential in life to, to stop needing to come first, to stop needing to be able to be the one to plant the flag in the ground and say that you got there first, to say you made up this idea first. Why don't you learn from the people who did it first, learn what it is that they acquired from it, and then decide what it is that you want and understand that what you want will be unique. And you don't have to worry about being first there because you'll be the only one even going after it to use your mind a little bit more and stop thinking that everything's a race. Separate yourself from the race. You shouldn't be competing. You should be branching out and, and doing something new. So with Scorpio on your ninth house cusp, you're going to really want to challenge the idea of consistency, the worth of consistency, and learn to adopt an ability to transition and to translate, because that will become your potential. You may have grown up getting, um, you may have grown up being taught the the importance of staying consistent in in keeping keeping a grasp around what it is that you understand and being able to let everything else change because you understand something at its core. But that's not really going to help you as you branch out and learn more and experience more. What's going to help you is your ability to actually let go of what it is that you understand and allow everything to change. Let your core change, transition. So with Sagittarius on the ninth house cusp, this is the challenging of what you've read in books and what you've heard in lectures. Your ability to put the information that you learn to the test is your potential. To take an anecdote, take a piece of advice and just try it. See if it actually works. If it doesn't work for you, let that shit go and let people know that you don't believe in it. And when the things that you've learned actually work for you and you can feel as if, all right, I can use this in my real life, I believe in this thing, then tell people that. But to test what it is that you know and to test what it is that other people know, is the potential that you bring to life. So with Capricorn on your ninth house cusp, it is important for you to challenge what we as society feel is inherent. Your ability to promote like a free radicalism is really what your potential lies within. Um, your ability, like you may have, you may have grown up being taught the importance of, of just basic human nature, what is just basic to us, what society just functions off of, what you're supposed to do, and what everyone is expected to do. And it's your job to come in there and, and challenge those things and say, well, I'm going to do what's unexpected. I'm going to do what nobody asked me to do. I'm going to give people what they need, not what they want. And then using your, your success by doing so to get other people to try it for themselves and to buy into your means belief and your means of potential. So with Aquarius sitting on your ninth house cusp, it's important that you challenge the ideas and the ideals surrounding personal prowess. Your ability to not align yourself with the standard, not align yourself with an old school idea of something, but to actually align yourself with universal truths is your potential. You may have grown up being taught the importance of individuality and individual power and your ability to, to have your name mean something in the world, mean something to society. But what you'll learn is that the people that really mean something to society are the people that align with what society is made up of, not aligning with what society is going after. Don't become the dream, but become the reason why society dreams in the first place. So with Pisces on the ninth house cusp, it is important that you challenge methodology and that you challenge the promise of success that may have been taught to you 
um, from a young age. Your potential comes from your ability to redefine success. Um, the easiest um, the easiest allegory to make for this placement is the American dream. The idea that you're just supposed to grow up, go to school, go to college, get a job, have kids, be happy, and, and, and teach your kids how to do exactly what you did. That methodical approach that's just very one step, two step, three, and how those steps can be a promise of success, can be a promise of security. But it's, it's up to people with the, this placement, with Pisces on their ninth house cusp, to challenge that and to make more intuitive decisions deciding what it is that makes them happy, what steps they need to take to get there, and what success actually looks like for the individual. So I want to thank you guys so much for watching and subscribe if you haven't already, like the video if you like it, and um, leave a comment if you want to share with me. Um, I really want you guys to share the videos, um, talk about this with other people with certain ninth house placements, maybe if you're in college right now, see how this applies to what you're trying to get done in that kind of angsty college feeling that kind of happens. So I implore you guys to hop over to my Patreon, check things out, and lend some support. I'm really excited because I'm going to be actually collecting a few of the questions that I find on the comments because I know I'm really bad at answering them and answering them on a specific video to come in about a week or two. So make sure you set, put your questions out there. Make sure that you're contacting me and you're, con and you're talking with each other and you're having conversations so I can check them out and talk about them in the video to come. So I feel like that's about it. Thanks for watching again and uh, yeah, stay tuned because you never know what I'll be talking about next.